That's a weird outro. That's even weirder than my old one. All right. Guys, JDS Sport Talks video. Welcome back. It's been a while. It's been two weeks now. Not two weeks. A week and a half since I uploaded. Uh, I think close to two weeks actually. The first week, I have no excuse. I was planning to upload videos on Sunday, but um, in footy, I kind of got concussed and decided I couldn't stop making a video because of it. Because I kind of puked twice and my vision was all dodgy and shit. I'm still concussed now, but I'm perfectly fine, basically. I can't play or anything, obviously, because I'm concussed. You don't want to play with concussion because you can have serious damage on yourself. But um, yeah, let's get into the stories. That's really irrelevant. First story, Lalana has officially left Liverpool now. His contract ended a few days ago. It might have actually even been yesterday. And almost instantly, Brighton snapped him up. Took him for free from us. Um, I don't really care to him for free. I don't care that... Well, I don't care... No, that's, I don't not care that he's gone. I don't care that he's gone for free. Um, he was good for us. He's been with us for a long time. He's been, been with us since pre-Klopp. Um, but he has now moved to Brighton. I'm not sure how much he's getting paid or anything at Brighton. Don't even, don't even know if it's been um, if it's been announced or anything. But I do have two articles here if you want to read into them. He's been a good player for us over the year. Not so much in the last few years. Not been bad when he played for us. He's not played much for us in the last few years. But years ago, he was a good player for us consistently when he was playing consistent first team. And when he has played with us recently, he hasn't done poorly. And he scored some important goals this year, especially one important goal where I believe it was to win against... Might have even been Villa, I don't remember who it was, but it was a close game against someone and he kicked a goal. It was a cross into him, kicked an important goal for us. Which really is one of the games which made us win the Premier League. If you watch a video of uh, 10 games which won Liverpool the Premier League, that game is in one of them and that goal is in that video. Um, let's move on to the next story. It's more of a story, this one. I don't even know what it is, to be honest. I've got a whole pile of um, tabs here. I'm not going to talk about anything that I've missed in the previous time, the previous weeks. Obviously, Liverpool have won the Premier League. Villa have survived. Um, teams that went down, I know it, who have been gone for a while. I don't know why they don't like this, but I'm going to continue with it. Uh, Bournemouth in second last and Watford in third last. So those three teams are down. Um, Apart from that, there's not much to talk about. Man City came second. We got 99 points, fell just short of the 100. Record we fell short of because of a bit of a lapse of concentration, I feel like. Lapse of real hunger after we won the Premier League. 30 years, I feel like. that After that long, we sort of just... I guess it was sort of like a, so much of a relief that we didn't look concentrated, I guess. I don't know. We just didn't play to our expected performance level and lost a few games. Like, we lost to Arsenal 2-1. Also, something else happened that I probably should mention. Both Man City and I believe Man United, it was, are knocked out of the FA Cup by Chelsea and Arsenal. They will be in the grand final. Um, Man City lost to Arsenal, didn't play well at all. Arsenal, complete, from what I saw from the stats, just outclassed them a bit. Um, yeah, it's going to move on to the story now. It's about Aubameyang, and it's kind of semi about the Golden Boot, which did go to Jamie Vardy. This is just a, this article, what it talks about, is pretty much just a heartwarming little thing about Aubameyang's dad talking about how proud he is of him for what he has done in his career. Obviously, his dad's a player himself. He played for teams like, I've got to find, I read this earlier today, I've got to find where it was, where it says. I know it was Le Havre, Toulouse, and it was Nice. I can't find it in here. There it is. Toulouse, Nice, and Le Havre were the teams his father played for. Um, so he's a decent player himself by the looks of it. I'm not gonna lie, don't know who he is. Should I know who he is? If I should, tell me down below. Uh, I'll probably look it up after this. Probably should have looked up before this, to be honest, but I forgot this was in here. Um, so, yeah, as I said, Vardy won the golden boot. Um, Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang got 22 goals. I believe Vardy got 24. I wouldn't quote me on that, but I believe he did. I'll search it up now just to be sure while well, I get on to the next story. Um, which is Klopp had a breakfast with. Alexander Ferguson after winning the Premier League. Um, so after, sorry, not that, after getting the Manager of the Year award, um, and Ferguson actually forgave him for ringing him at 3:45 in the morning to tell him that they won the Premier League. Um, 
And Klopp said, despite what people think he should think, he actually looks up to um, Ferguson, which every manager should really. I don't care who you play for. If you don't look up to Alex Ferguson as a manager, then you're just a bit dumb. Look what he did as a manager. If you don't look up to him and what he did, then rethink how you're looking at things. I'm going to find this golden boot now. Um, just give me a second, EPL golden boot. Yeah, uh, Klopp described having dinner. He described about having dinner with Ferguson back when he was just, I think he was new to managing in England. I don't remember exactly when it was, but it was his first dinner with an English manager. Well, sorry, um, British manager, because obviously Ferguson's Scottish, not English. But, um, yeah, and he said it was like meeting the Pope, which shows how much respect he has for him. Um, and everyone should have for him, really. As I said before, everyone should have that level of respect for Alexander, uh, yeah, Alexander Ferguson. Uh, I can't find the actual golden boot here. Um, player stats. I know Jamie Vardy definitely won it. Danny Ings came third. I'm pretty sure here it is. I found it here. So I may as well read the top five whilst I'm here. First, I was wrong with the goals. It was Jamie Vardy on 23. And then it's a draw for second with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Danny Ings getting 22 apiece. Uh, Raheem Sterling getting 20 for fourth. And Mohamed Salah getting fifth in 19. And Kane, I thought I should say Kane as well, getting six in 18. Well, with 18, combined with Sadio Mane on 18. Um, so yeah, that was the Golden Boot, just to clarify that. So it was not 24, it was 23 goals that Vardy got for the Golden Boot. We're going to move on to... Actually, I'll do the main story last. We're going to move on now to... Um, not Dean Cox. Mason Cox, the US tall forward Dash Rockman that plays for Collingwood, who has recently fallen out of favour in the club. Um, and I'm not really sure why. He never seemed to play poorly. His kicking has gone slightly off, I'd say. And his general... Um, I guess... Not hype. General... Like, not a want for the ball, but like his intensity on the ball, I feel like, has dropped off a little bit. I feel like he felt a bit. Maybe, I feel like now, I'm thinking off my head now, maybe he felt a bit too comfortable that his position was solidified. That's just the thought that I just had. Maybe he just felt overly solidified in his position that he wasn't going to lose it, which made him get complacent and lose his position to, I believe, a guy that they bought from Sydney, who is now, I believe that's just replaced him. I remember who it was, a guy who they've recently got from somewhere else, he only played a few games, who was playing against uh, Eagles uh, Sunday, uh, which they did lose miserably in the end to the Eagles. But the player himself, I didn't think from what I saw, what he touched, he didn't touch the ball much, but he, when he did touch it, he did well. Um, I believe it was Sydney he played for, I wouldn't quote him on that again. I'm not going to look, that, look up that one you might say in here, I don't know. But yeah, he's just one, turned up, um, sorry, he's no longer in favour for the picking for his spot in the Collingwood side. Um, my advice to him is just to get your head straight if, you, if it's mental, I guess, determination or want problems that are stopping you from performing to your peak and losing your positions. Just fix your mind up, work hard, and you'll get back in there anytime soon. It might also have been slightly about his um, his hype is gone. All the hype of the big American man is all sort of blanked out now. But Buckley has also said, and a quote here that is in this article, obviously everything that I talk about, there are articles in the description unless I say there is not. Um, Mason, it, this is Buckley's quote, Mason's performances have been under par as he's aware of that. Oh, oh, sorry, and he's aware of that, not as. So, the, I'll repeat that. His quote is, Mason's performances have been under par, and he's aware of that. So, just as I said, get your mind straight. Put more determination into training, and I'm sure with your playing in the VFL for Collingwood's VFL team, you will find your way back into the first team pretty quickly. Now, talk about the main thing, which is West Coast Eagles player, Elliot Yo, who has got a one-week suspension for... I'm going to say accidentally hitting, not, well, the, throwing the punch was intentional, obviously, but hitting the head was unintentional. Now, I do think, I'm not going to say that the ban, not the ban, the weak suspension is too harsh. So, uh, how do I explain this? I wouldn't say that I would fight against it, but I would say I slightly disagree with it. 
because they're saying as if it was they're looking at it as if it was intentional head high contact but it was clearly bounce off the chest into the head which is then obviously unintentional head high contact but you still should be throwing a punch so I'm never I'm not going to argue against the one week ban because it might be really if you thought if you clearly throw a punch in an attempt to hurt the opposition then you should be given a one week ban and um, just because it's accidental, I reckon it probably should still be one week ban, but by the rules they say, I would say I disagree, by the rules that they use, I disagree with the decision that was made in terms of being intentional head high contact, which has resulted in one week ban. But I'm not going to fight against it because I feel he should get the one week ban anyway, and I don't think he's that important of a player. He's like, we can, he's a good player, but he's sporadic and. He needs the team to play well for him to play well. He can't be the player to kick us into gear. He needs, he's a fair weather player, basically. He need like, not as in rain, hail, shine, fair weather as in, he needs the team to play well for him to play well. He can't be the player to kick us into gear and play well. He needs someone to kick him into gear every time. You've never seen a game where the Eagles are playing average and he lifts us. I may be proven wrong there, so I might go out and find a game, but I've never seen a game where he's kicked us into gear. Which is disappointing. And I just realised, I'm not sure if I even started this recording. I did, thank God. Um, so that's the end of this video. It's been JDS. Thanks, bye. See you next time. See ya.